the Hundred Dollar MBA Show, and today is a Q and A weekend's episode where we answer your question right here on the show. If you have a question you want to ask us, guys, just email us at contact at 100mba.net, or you can send me a tweet on Twitter, at bizrepublic is my handle, B-I-Z Republic. As always, I'm your host, your coach, your teacher, Omar Zenholm. I'm also the co-founder of The $100 MBA, a complete business training and community online. And today's question on today's Q&A weekend's episode is from Sal. And Sal asks, how do I know what I should focus on in my business for 2016? What a timely question, Sal, as New Year's is just around the corner, just a few weeks away, actually a couple weeks away. I know a lot of us, we like to refocus, realign our energies and thoughts at the start of the year and take a look at our business and say, where can I improve? What should I focus on? And in today's lesson, I'm going to give you a strategy, give you a game plan on knowing how to choose what to focus on. Some of my advice may surprise you, but in my experience, this stuff works. So get excited, guys, because it's going to be a new year real soon, and you should be always striving to improve in your business. I'm going to give you a strategy to do so today. So let's get down to business. Today's episode of The $100 MBA Show is sponsored by Braintree. Looking to set up payments for your business, Braintree gives your app or website a payment solution that accepts just about every payment method with one simple integration. Plus, they'll give you your first $50,000 in transactions completely fee-free. That's pretty awesome. To learn more, visit braintreepayments.com slash MBA. That's braintreepayments.com slash MBA. So Sal asks, how does he know what to focus on for his business, how to improve his business for 2016? Well, I'm going to give you a strategy to know exactly how. I'm not of the opinion that you should really have several goals. I think you should have one major goal that's a long-term goal. And within that goal, you have many mini goals or steps to achieve that goal. It allows you to be more focused when you have one kind of calling, one thing that you really need to focus on and achieve. So the first step is I want you to open up a, a text doc or an Evernote or a paper and pen. And I want you to list the top three things that are frustrating you in your business. What are the things that really make you upset, that really kind of just makes you put your hands up in the air and say, man, this is really hard. This is really frustrating. Is it revenue? Is it sales? Are you not making enough money? Is it customer service? Are you just having a hard time dealing with customer service? Are you burnt out? Are you doing too much? Do you need to expand your team or maybe enough money to quit your day job so you can do your business full time? So what is frustrating you the most? I want you to write down the top three things. If nothing's really frustrating you, and things are pretty smooth sailing, what are some areas you feel that if you improved, it would greatly or dramatically increase your business or improve your business? When I say increase your business, I mean getting more people to use your products or services, having more sales, having more customers to serve. What are some areas you think that if they were improved, your business would just take it to the next level? You may not be there yet. Maybe the frustration list is what you need to focus on. But if you're not frustrated at anything, I want to give you something to do. What are some areas that your customers have been asking about? What are some of the feedback that you've been getting? So jot down these notes. Whether you're choosing frustrations or improvements, again, try to list at least three. If you want to go to five, go ahead and write five. Now, after you write them down, I want you to give each one a point value from zero to 10. Zero meaning if I made this change, if I improved this area, if I solved this frustration, how happy would I be? How would it significantly improve my life and my business? 10 being incredible, zero being uh, it didn't do anything at all. Five is it helped me, but it didn't make a major shift in my life. So go down the line of the things that you listed and give it a point value of zero to 10. Now you might find in my experience that the first things you wrote down are probably high on the list and are close to 10. I just want you to circle the one that got the top score. I want you to take a look at it. And I want you to write that thing, whatever that's frustration or what you're going to improve in your business, on a separate piece of paper or a new document. And on that document, I want you to list the things you would have to do in order for you to solve this problem or to improve this issue. So for example, if on the top of my document, it's I'm burnt out and I need help. Write down some of the areas that I would need to hire for. Find out how much I can afford to spend on salaries. Find out what's taking most of my time. 
write down some of the things that you would have to do in order to solve this problem. What are the things you would have to vet out? Some things that you would have to work out. What are some of the action steps? Posting a job on your website or on a job form or a tool like ZipRecruiter. The reason why we're doing this is because knowing what to focus on or knowing what you're going to work on next year is great. But having an action plan or having some solid steps to how you're going to achieve it is actually more important. If somebody says to themselves, I want to lose weight, that's wonderful. But what really counts is what are you going to do in order to lose that weight? You need to break it down into steps or action items because then it's digestible. Then it's like, okay, now I know what I need to do in order to achieve it. Now, the reason why we're also breaking down what you need to do in order to achieve these goals or to work on this item is to know how long is this going to take because maybe I can work on more than one thing. I know I mentioned that one thing is a good idea to focus on, but 2016 is 365 days, right? So we want to make sure that we're not twiddling our thumbs come March. So after you've written down all your steps of that number one item that you want to work on, just give a rough estimate of how long it would take to do each item on that list, whether it's three hours to write a job description or four hours to list all the things that I want to offload to somebody else or two weeks to interview and hire somebody new. Whatever those things are, write down a rough estimate of what you think. There's no right or wrong answer. What you think is going to take, how long it's going to take. And then total up the time, be generous. I would say even double it. So if your total is uh, four weeks, I would double it and make it eight weeks because we're normally very bad at guesstimating time, it's better to give ourselves more time to do the job right. So once I have a total, let's say it's two months, I know that this is gonna take me two months, I can move on to the next thing on my list, the next one that has the highest score on my list, and break it down into steps as well and see how much time it's gonna take. And do these things obviously in order, the one that has the highest score in terms of your pain point, the things you wanna solve, and then the next highest score would go next. Guys, I got more on today's topic, but before that, I got to give love to today's sponsor, Creative Live. Guys, I want to tell you about the slick maestros over at Creative Live. Creative Live helps people unlock their creative potential. Their online creative catalog is a great place to rekindle your artistic spark or dig into new skills like photography, design, crafting, music production, and business savvy. You can watch classes in their massive online catalog or come attend live. I've done it a few times myself. You can learn from the best like Tim Ferriss, Ann Geddes, and Alex Bloomberg. They'll show you how to bring your A-game to whatever revs your engine. Go to creativelive.com slash MBA for 20% off any of Creative Live's classes. Go ahead, jump in, and join a vibrant, lively community of creators today at creativelive.com slash MBA. To wrap up today's question on what to focus on for 2016, I want to say that it's important to have goals. Yes, it's good to have a New Year's resolution and to feel inspired and motivated to do something great and different in 2016. But the game plan is what makes it happen. So make sure you go through these steps and list the things you have to do to achieve these goals. Give it some time, meaning give it a time estimate. Do as much as you can and also do what you can immediately. As soon as you set a goal, you don't have to wait till New Year's. You can start right now. And as soon as you set a goal, you need to start now with the implementation. Don't wait till New Year's. Start as soon as you set that goal and you've written down all the things you need to do. So for example, if I want to offload some work, I'm feeling frustrated, I'm feeling burnt out, and I list all these things about, you know, writing a job description, interviewing people, deciding on a salary. I go to the top of the list. What's the first thing I have to do? Okay, write a job description. Or maybe before that, write down all the things that I would like to offload. What are things that are taking most of my time that I'd rather not be doing? Get started with the first step, with the first action item. It's so important to have momentum when you're doing your goals, when you're fulfilling your goals. I always say this, you got to strike the iron while it's hot. You need to continue so the next day and the next day. Momentum is very strong. It's like going to the gym. If you go to the gym, you know, three or four times a week for a month, it's a habit now. You do it all the time and it's easy. It's not like the first week. So the same thing goes with fulfilling your goals. If you're going to be launching a new business, Decide on a business name and register the domain name. Take action. Because the difference between the people that walk the walk instead of talk to talk is actually roll up their sleeves and get it done. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. If you loved it, if you found it useful, if you found any of our episodes useful, let us know in an iTunes rating and review. It takes two minutes and it really helps us know what you think of the show as well as it helps support the show. And remember, everybody who leaves us an iTunes rating and review enters our weekly random draw where we give away a free ride, a free lifetime membership to the $100 MBA training and community. 
That's $100 value for free for anybody who left us an iTunes rating and review with our weekly random draw. Guys, that's it for me today. But before I go, I want to leave you with this. One of the best pieces of advice I can give you when it comes to being an entrepreneur, building a business, growing a business, is that there is real no finish line. There's always room for improvement. There's always things that you can improve or fix or build or grow. So get used to that. Get used to the fact that you're always going to be working on something. And the journey is something you should enjoy. That process is something that you really should look forward to. Because those who enjoy the process, usually their products and services are a whole lot better than those who don't. After all, you're building something for yourself and building a legacy behind. What better life to live? All right, guys, I'll check you in tomorrow's episode. I'll see you then. Take care.